Hello and welcome to Picture This New Media. My name is Ernest Pena and welcome to the comic book section of my YouTube channel. This is actually um, the comic book uh, haul that I got uh, for New Comic Book Wednesday on uh, August the the 25th, actually. The, or no, the... Um, August 20... Actually, yeah, it was August 25th. August 25th. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Sorry it's a little bit late, but um, I'm getting better. I'm trying to catch up here. And I'll try to get through this as fast as possible. This one right here by Dark Horse Comics is uh, the Norse myth mythology. Norse, Norse mythology. Norse mythology. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah, this one. Uh, so, tel Telafi. Excuse me, Tlafi, I believe his name is, um, the world's fastest man actually joins Loki and Thor, um, being that he was actually tricked, um, uh, by, by Loki in the first place, and he is on a mission with a giant, they are on a mission with a giant, and the giant and them split ways, but they end up in this place, where it seems to be Loki's, um, so it has to do with something with Loki's past. I'm not going to give too many spoilers away, but I have a new rating system. Uh, so whenever I review a comic, I haven't got an, a, an actual scale and can prove how I got to that, but this is just by, uh, you know, by emotions, I guess, and how I, much I liked the art and how much I liked it. So this is all just personal preference, in my opinion. Uh, Norse Mythology number 3 gets a 9.5 out of 10 with all the artwork and the story combined. Uh, so yeah, 9.5 out of 10. And anything up my, my uh, rating scale... Next up will be Usagi Yojimbo, uh, which is a three ninety nine, and it's a, a number three out of six, um, uh, three out of six uh, mini issue, mini series. Uh, Usagi Yojimbo, the Dragon Ballo Conspiracy. Um, I have the script back there, so that's how I am reading. But anyways, Usagi wins um, a match, basically and is offered a position with uh, the Lord the, um, that, that he's fighting there, Lord Tamakos. Um, I don't know how to read that, but anyways, the Rhino uh, Samurai, pretty much the one that's following um, the pig, uh, gets, gets, um, gets a tip of where to find Zato Mao, which is the pig. Um, well, uh, Tomo's ex execution is actually, um, initiated, uh, that's when Usagi, or Usagi, however it's pronounced, um, pretty much, uh, steps in and harbors, uh, an escape attempt, um, yeah, and I don't want to give with too much um, away, but at the end of that, uh, they basically, there's basically a little bit of ninja involvement, ninja involvement in the Yusagi Yojimbo. So I gave this a 9.8 out of 10. That's Yusagi Yojimbo, ba Dragon Battle Conspiracy, number 3, IDW. 9.8 out of 10. My highest rated comic book for this, um, for this, uh, this collection. Next up, we have by American Mythology is the number one of Techno Freak. Uh, the love, the, for the love of Loretta. Now this one is a interesting one. I, I I didn't really get it. It's it's set in London in the year three thousand twenty six or three thousand two yeah three thousand twenty six, 
and uh, basically it's kind of told and narrated by a robot rabbit and this robot rabbit um, lives with a with an old friend um, named John basically for lack of a not me not remembering the full name um, John uh, is visited by an old friend in his bar and uh, basically he needs help to find the woman that he stole from John <laughs> believe it or not yeah uh, like a simp John accepts because uh, you know that's what simps do and uh, come to find out that he <laughs> She's actually with another guy, and that guy was making clones of uh, Loretta. So she gets mad, and then, well, I gave a bunch of spoilers away on this one. So, yeah, basically John ends up getting the girl in the end. But it's very funny how it's put together, and I highly re uh, recommend getting this at your own peril. Like I said, a 6.2 out of 10. 6.2 out of 10 is my uh, my rating for Techno Freak, uh, The Love of Loretta, issue number one by American Mythology Productions. Alright, next up by Image Comics, and Image came, a lot, uh, came out with a lot this time. Uh, so did Scout, so we'll be having a lot of Scout and Image ones is final issue number three. Three. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, vinyl issue number three. Uh, this one. Uh, here's a better uh, look at that. Uh, the twins basically are um, are. Let's see here. I can't read. Uh, are basically turning out to be fanboys of this new killer uh, named Rennie. Or, yeah, Rennie, that's how it's spelled. And, um, she, she basically has this weird little fetish of, uh, blood, with blood and skin. Uh, think of that what you will. Uh, yeah, I think bathing has something to do with it. Uh, anyways, uh, Walter, or aka, also known as Snap, as Remy likes to call her, call him, uh, the guy who puts the, 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 the bear, the bear helmet, the bear uh, mask on uh, on him is basically uh, Rennie or Rennie and uh, uh, Snap uh, killed a quote unquote friend, uh, and um, and he was in the last issue. He gave him that record, that vinyl record. Uh, turns out. Uh, uh, the big guy with uh, with the twin uh, are raiding their victim's fridge, and he notices some type of creepy. The big guy uh, notices some type of creepy uh, hand and face uh, in in this uh, doorway with the window, um, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, go further into any kind of details with that. Um, but Snap, Snap, uh, or Walter, uh, tells the, the agent that they're working with about, uh, his love of vinyl and how it came to be. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we get to figure that out and, and yeah, it's a pretty cool little d dive into, into, um, Walter and everything. I gave this a 6.9 out of 10, not a full 7. Um, uh, other issues I think kind of deserve like a, a 7.5, maybe even a 7.7, .7, but I, I think it's going to be averaging around 7.5 for me with this, with this series. Next up, we have... By Image Comics, The Old Guard Tales, uh, The Old Guard, Tales Through Time. Uh, and basically running with the theme of two stories. The first one, um, 
and also uh, 1978 uh, New York City Times Square. Uh, there seems to be nuns uh, basically preaching damnation, uh, but uh, they they're kind of like walking into their uh, establishment, get some people to follow them in there, and they're they're carrying pistols. Um, so this crazy drunk dude kind of rants uh, atheism at 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 him, at them, and basically he he gets wild up and he shoots himself in the head. Uh, in front of these nuns, um, and, you know, uh, going with this, uh, this story of the old guards of time, he comes back to life because he's one of those people, and, um, basically the nuns kidnap him and try to use his blood and other bodily fluids, if you get what I mean, uh, to, to get uh, immortality or a vessel through God or some type of weird uh, justification to keep this guy but um, his friend uh, basically comes to the rescue um, never gets old the second story is about two Frenchmen uh, they're basically having lunch in this crazy male Karen uh, causes a ruckus and shoots the guy. Um, of course, he's one of the guys that don't die, so uh, I don't want to give too much spoilers away, but this one, um, this one is definitely good to watch as, you know, violence happens and, and, uh, yeah, yeah, he survives. But, you know, he, he saves face here. Uh, this one I rated a 9 out of 10. Um, the artwork is beautiful. The story just continues on. It's, it's funny. It's great. It's entertaining. Really nothing bad uh, I, I can say about the, this series. Um, it is, uh, this is issue number five, and there's, this is a six-part series, so this will be the second to the last, uh, one on that. But, uh, next up for Image Comics is Echo Lands, uh, issue number one. Uh, there we go, to get better. Ca this is actually how the the comic is supposed to be read so it opens you know like this it opens like this you know this this part is where the the pages start and this is where the binding is it's really cool i, ha I haven't seen a comic it fits a regular comic uh thing see uh side side to side then you know, one on top of another. It's the same size. Uh, this one's actually four ninety nine. It's a little bit more expensive uh, than than the comics that are coming out right now. Uh, but this one's definitely worth it for Image Comics. Uh, basically, this one uh, there is an only child. Basically. Um, who loves her parents until this, uh, this thing called the Red takes over. And, um, basically it's really, really, really weird, but it's artistic and it's riled up and dark. There's basically, uh, these wizard cops, um, that are coming to get, uh, Red. Let's call her Red from now on. And... She has this crazy powers where she makes the people explode. Uh, she kind of just explodes the heads with her mind. Um, yeah, and um, basically there is the, the leader of these uh, wizard cops or sorcerer cops, wizard cops. And this wizard is, she tries to fight with Red, 
and uh, she's actually made of magic too and she has some interesting physical attributes uh, going on with the, the leader of this wizard cops um, yeah very interesting very very highly recommended oh yeah uh, my ratings for Echo Land Echo yeah Echo Land is um, a 9.5 out of 10 so highly recommended go get this one next up for Image Comics is uh, Saint Mercy issue number one and this is actually Top Cow uh, this is a Top Cow um, productions from, from Image now this one um, it starts off uh, during basically the Inca period uh, we meet a girl that is meant to be a sacrifice um, and it, she, she seems, it seems to be a big honor amongst this little clique. Uh, she talks to the other offerings, and there's this fat one that she gets kind of jealous of. It's kind of cute. Fast forward to 1891, it's the wild, wild west, and there's this, uh, basically this Native American Inca girl uh, that is kind of... Um, kind of uh, misunderstood basically and her name is Mercy uh, Mercy is uh, let's see a descendant of, of this girl from the past story and um, something has happened and she is getting robbed uh, ba um, and yeah there's, there's uh, some secret hidden powers that it's gonna get her in danger but it kind of ends there and uh, to be continued so this is a highly recommended one and this one actually um, is is my second highest rating what one uh, tied tied with the other one this is a 9.8 out of 10 um, I was going to give it a 9.7, but after doing the reread I and and having Esther read it too, we both loved this one. Uh, highly recommended. I didn't want to give too much spoilers away, so that's why I was very uh, vague. So for Source Point Comics is uh, Runes Heritage, uh, issue number two. Iona, the daughter of Regent of Derox, uh, I believe is what it's pronounced, uh, are talking about his dream and their future. As predicted in his dream, the father is killed um, by, by an attack of the undead. Iona talks to Anrar, um, the previous protagonist in the last comic book, in a cell. Uh, there basically it appears to be um, the mom of, of Anrar, uh, uh, basically accusing the, 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 the council of, um, you know, being liars. Um, this one was, was pretty interesting. There seems to be, uh, a power play going on, um, and a cover-up. Uh, the, the mother... The mother uh, knows that her boy Anrar didn't kill the person they're they're t saying he killed, but at the same time, um, in the comic book, it shows you what really happened and who killed whom. Um, so yeah, that's really cool, and I am I am super super happy that this one. Like I said, I gave it a a. a I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 just because the story is pretty well put together. It would have got a 9 out of 10 if it was a little bit more exciting, though. Um, next up for Vault Comics is issue number 3 of Vault Barbaric. Uh, Barbaric. And let's see here. There's the, co the, the cover. Now, Barbaric, issue number three, uh, this, this one is get, um, Sorin is getting possessed by that little, that creature, and, um, 
Owen, the, the barbarian, is fighting to save Sorin. Basically, she, he succeeds to break up her possession and, and starts killing the, 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 the bodyguards and the, and the, and the little uh, creatures that they, they go to, that he sends and makes to fight against them. Um, uh, basically, he saves her. And now with her new strength, she has gotten stronger. Um, the main bad guy gets totally obliterated, but I don't want to give away too many reasons as to how or anything like that. Uh, there's definitely a continuance, and you should definitely take a look into this. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, definitely a highly recommended one by Vault. This one really did surprise me. I really like this series and where it's going. I gave it a 9 out of 10. It was a highly recommended. So yeah, definitely a good, good one to, to keep an eye out for. Next up by Scout Comics, uh, the Black Caravan series is uh, Count Draco uh, Knuckle... Duster, Count Draco, Knuckle Duster. Yeah, so with Count Draco, uh, Knuckle Duster, it starts out with him experimenting on this goblin creature. And um, basically, uh, the art style is really cool. It reminds me of um, just like some old school comic books. There's even uh, ads in the back for like the old timey kind of cartoon. Uh, um, toys that they sell and stuff like that. Um, really cool, really neat. Uh, there's even a Skeletor looking character that is featured on here. And yeah, super neat. Uh, I, I recommend it. Um, Black Caravan by Scout always puts out these very good magic uh, related material. And I really like the way this is headed. Um, Basically, uh, there's between Star Killer and um, Count Draco. Uh, Star Killer finds a super cool magic girl, and he wants to protect her. But Count Draco Knuckle Duster wants to use her, use her, and her special heart to basically for his evil deeds, for his evil deeds. Yep. Next up by Scout Comics is uh, issue number one of Life Formed. Now this starts off pretty cute. It starts off with a cute teenage girl um, uh, that has a fear of public speaking in school, basically. You know, what, what teenager does, doesn't? Um, yeah, so basically the, it goes from her to these like blue jelly anthropomorphic uh, like creatures that are talking about this crazy plan and using a certain special slave uh, type a uh, slave but it looks like those creatures um, uh, yeah so I don't, I don't know um, but uh, next Next comes, uh, what, what comes next is basically all hell breaks loose and there's, you know, uh, earth ships fighting these alien ships and in a moment of weird confusion, something happens to the dad and, um, well, basically he dies and one of the aliens transforms into the dad and I'm not gonna spoil it from an, anything more than that you have to get this one but after getting this one you have to get the trade paperback which is where it's gonna continue it looks like they're not gonna make any floppy continuance books on this uh, unfortunately which which really sucks because I would have liked to see single issue copies of this um, next up by Scout Comics is, let's see here, 
Midwestern, uh, Midnight Western Theater, issue number three, Scout Comics. Uh, sorry about the freaking uh, light there, but we, uh, we go back to our vampire friend here. And um, it's 1848, and a vampire... And, uh, not our favorite vampire, but a, a bad vampire and his assistant were plotting to steal and kill for for a rival, basically. Uh, then then it goes to a Native American um, storyteller uh, telling his family about the path of the unknown. So in 1861, the Native... Uh, uh, in 1861, the native telling this story to his family uh, is talking about this story where um, his horse died and basically he is hungry and thirsty and he finds a tent with this weird shaman. Um, the shaman tells him to find this Yinald Ushi, which basically is um, a chomper looking dude, you know, chomper from. Uh, what's that cartoon, the anime, One Piece, One Piece. Yeah, Chomper, the reindeer-looking dude. He's basically got a big old buff dude with reindeer antlers. Um, and uh, kind of looks like the Forsworn antlers and stuff. Uh, very Forsworn from, from Skyrim. But yeah, very, very creepy dude. And um, basically, uh, that vampire... And from the previous issues, starts fighting with this this chomper dude, and um, our other vampire friend, the woman one, saves our native man friend somehow. Somehow. So, yeah, this one's definitely really cool. I definitely spoiled it for everybody, and I apologize for that. But definitely highly recommended, and I. Ooh, I, I, I hope you guys read this, even though I spoiled it for you. I, with my vague descriptions, I doubt I ruined anything. Next up for Scout Comics is Stanley the Snowman. Stanley the Snowman. This is actually by the Scout Scoot uh, Comics uh, for, for kids. It's got a very cute anime style. Uh, this, this girl... Uh, she basically uh, has um, has uh, has to go to school on a snow day, and she's a little upset about that. What what kid wouldn't be? Um, and when she gets uh, when she gets back home, she builds a snowman uh, basically. And she puts this special little magic lock into her into her snowman, and dum da da dum 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 dum, it comes to life. Believe it or not, she wants to keep it a secret from her family, um, but her family has a very unsuspecting surprise coming up that's gonna ruin her whole winter plans with. Stanley the Snowman. I give this an 8 out of 10. Unfortunately, with these Scout comic books, for some crazy reason, unlike what Midnight Western Theater, this one will also be continuing in a graphic novel, young adults graphic novel type trade paperback book. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Oh yeah, and this one, by the way, I give it an 8 out of 10, an 8 out of 10, because it's very cute, and I really think a lot of kids would like this. This one, right here by Scout Scoot Comics, is uh, called Action Tank. Uh, basically, it's about a, about a boy, um, he goes into this unfamiliar place in unfamiliar clothing, and all he can think about is his mom's food. Uh, this crazy, 
quatricorn. At first, I thought it was unicorn, and so did the boy. Um, uh, pretty much tells him that he's like on this mission, and he has to get this thing at the bottom of a lake, a uh, lava lake. But the the suit that he's wearing can protect him, and has all these cool little features. It's for kids and everything like that. But I, I, to be honest, I, I really didn't like the writing. I really didn't like the story. It had no point, in my opinion, no substance. And the kid could have had a better motivation other than his mom's food. Like missing his mom or missing his friends or he had a, a something important or, you know, he just misses Earth. Like, and he's got transferred, you know, just... I, I don't get it. Um, I give it a 4 out of 10. I was going to be... Actually, a 4.2 out of 10. I was going to be mean and give it a 3. But it did have some cute art. And I'm sure some kids are going to love this. But as for me and sharing it with some... Uh, maybe my kids... Or my friend's kids, I, I would recommend something else <laughs> to them, in my opinion. Next up, uh, for Dynamite Comics, actually, is Deja Taurus, or Deja Thoris versus John Carter of Mars, uh, issue number two. Issue number two. There's the, the cover there. Now, uh, DJ, or Deja Tora. Uh, pretty much, uh, visits this place, uh, visits, uh, Rotak, uh, Gaul. He's, uh, basically this big, um, brainiac-looking scientist, renegade, outlaw, mastermind, all of those they mentioned. Um, and basically when, when, uh, they interrogate him, all his little powerful creatures and stuff, uh, disappear and he you know he plays the victim plays uh, you know scared and that he uh, with his alliance was with Kurz was just all a, all basically him being a thrall and that he was forced to do all this bad stuff by Queen uh, so tall and Kurz you know her accomplice um, so Basically, the the guy was talking to her and trying to get her to go to this little uh, thing with all her men, and she disappeared in when they went over these arches. These arches, these arches were magical and um, basically trapped uh, Rotak and Deja together. Um, uh, so, for some crazy reason, um, uh, John Carter of Mars got uh, the news back on Helium and went into this other dimension somehow and got, got through those little arches and yeah, that's basically where it ends, to be continued. We'll see what happens when... Uh, when John Carter of Mars exacts his revenge on Deja. And um, last but not least, on the reviews, or I guess you can call them summaries, of, um, of uh, my comic book haul for the 25th of August is Good Luck, issue number three by Boom. And basically, this one, oh, let me get a better, oh, sorry. There we go, better uh, look there at this cover. Now, basically, what happens with this one is the the kids that, um, the un, unfortunates that don't have the good luck in their, uh, their system, they are considered dead, and... Um, the, the, there's this, uh, Orion, the gods of, um, what's it called? The gods of luck, Orion Gambler, Twin Wolves, Gemini, um, some other ones, uh, 
they they basically they basically are are a little bit summarized what's going on here but that mustache man is uh basically sounding the 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 drums of war beating the drums of war and are using this little uh this little um thing this fake death uh of these unfortunates to to justify it um and well turns out that um uh, that there was this little uh, little girl named Sabina, and she was, um, you know, kind of going going along with this with with one of the bad bad people there, and it turns out um, that through some weird uh, force of magic that these kids are actually alive, and they were saved by one of the gods of luck, who is yellow. And uh, Joseph, the test pilot, is seems to have um, uh, on his well way to becoming the a god of luck, just like the the yellow guy that saved him. So yeah, I, I try not to get away too much spoilers there. Um, I kind of did, but it. I'm pretty sure you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. So whenever you read the comment, you won't comic book you won't be that surprised uh, or you will be more surprised because my description was pretty bad but um with the good luck one i give it a uh, a six out of ten something was lacking the story was lacking i was a little confused um i didn't really put it together well the the writing's bad but the art is beautiful i give it a good shot uh, it's good for kids. It's a five-part series, so it's not going to be a whole mess of confusion. It's, it's going to be fairly short. And it's got room for improvement, basically, as I said. And for Deja Tor uh, Torres versus John Carter of Mars, I gave this a 7 out of 10. Um, it's a little cheesy, I'll be honest. It's a little cheesy, and she fell into that trap like she was retarded. Um, and yeah, so yeah, that's, that's the end of, um, my haul. I did get an extra one in the haul, uh, gung-ho, uh, anger. Unfortunately, I did not know that issue three had came out already, so I had missed out on number three, unfortunately. So I have not found it online, able to read it, and I've also been super busy, so I haven't been able to find out. Oh, there goes my light again. Uh, been able to find out what happened, so I haven't gotten up to date enough to get a fair review on this. So once again, I thank you guys for watching. I totally appreciate it. Um, I, uh, like I said, uh, if you watch my previous. Um, you watch my previous video I am considering a patreon and I will get more details on that once I figure out what I'm gonna do and get it set up uh, for the time being if you like what I'm doing please donate to me at Salama Fendi on Venmo you can also uh, follow me on Twitter with the same handle at Salama Fendi um, also, if you would rather use PayPal, uh, my, my profile on there is at Ernest Pena. I will also leave a link in the description uh, to get to that PayPal. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I'd like to thank Zia Comics for providing uh, these great comics for me. Assalamu alaikum. Have a great day.